This is my DIY emulation handheld that I built with parts that were not meant to go together. I call it Frankenstein Switch. It has some incredible features that I will talk about later in this video. I will also tell you how I built it, which components I use and how much they cost, the software, the gaming performance, the battery life, so grab a cup of coffee and make yourself comfortable. Act 1. The Components the basis for this build is a first generation Surface Go running Batocera Linux, which runs out of the box without any tweaks. Batocera is a powerful and easy to use Linux distribution for retro gaming, which we will talk about later in more detail. One of the best features of the Surface Go is that it is passively cooled and therefore completely silent, perfect for the late night gaming sessions in bed. Another cool feature is the 10 inch screen, which is well suited for retro gaming in 4x3 thanks to its 16x10 aspect ratio. Originally, I wanted to use the GameSir G8 Plus tablet controller, but at 90 euro it was a bit too expensive. This is low budget Linux gaming and my channel isn't even monetized yet. So instead I bought this third party Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons for 35 euros, which are supported by Bodocera out of the box. And they also have RGB. Luckily the RGB can easily be switched off. In order to be able to attach the Joy-Cons to the Surface Go, I printed this adapter that I found on Thingiverse. I actually wanted to use this as a starting point for my own design, but it works really well and is very sturdy, so no reason to change anything. I also printed this Joy-Con grip, which makes my handheld just versatile as a real Nintendo Switch. I can use it as a handheld, or on the table with the kickstand, or connect it to the TV. Act 2. The Costs What's very cool about this DIY handheld is that it's quite affordable, at least as long you have access to a 3D printer. A used first generation Surface Go can be found for around 70 euros, the third party Joy-Cons cost 35 euros and the required amount of filament for the 3D printer is around 2 euros, makes a final price of 107 euros. If you don't have access to a 3D printer, the GameSir G8 Plus could be worthwhile. With the Surface Go the final price would be 160 euros which is still very cheap for what you get, in my opinion. Act 3. The Software For this build I chose Batocera, which is a Linux distribution tailored for retro gaming. And it comes pre-installed with a lot of emulators. This is not a review video for Batocera, so I will only talk about features that benefit this project. But keep in mind that Batocera has a lot more to offer. One key feature is that the whole UI can be navigated with the controller only, which is very important in order to operate like a real handheld. Tasks that do require a keyboard and mouse such as adding ROMs can be easily done over the network from another PC. There's always a file server running in the background on Batocera, which can be used to transfer ROMs and BIOS files. If there's ever the need to tinker with the Linux system underneath, then this can also be done over the network via SSH. All of this is pre-configured out of the box. The screen of the Surface Go is quite large and high res and therefore I opted to use integer scaling and enable the scanline shader on all games. This results in huge black bezels, but it also preserves the original look how I remember the games when I played them on the original hardware on a CRT TV. Of course it's possible to run the games in a higher resolution than the original and also in full screen, but in my opinion this takes away from the charm of the older games that were designed to be played on a low res CRT TV. And this really shows how incredible Batocera is, because settings like these can be easily done for every game independently with the controller only. Act 4. The Performance Honestly, there's not much to say about the performance. All emulators from systems before the 6th generation run at full speed without any problems. These are consoles like PlayStation 1, Nintendo 64, Super NES, NES, etc. With the 6th generation consoles, it gets a bit more complicated. Sega Dreamcast and Nintendo GameCube run without problems, PlayStation 2 unfortunately does not, which is a shame as I would have loved to play some God of War and Gran Turismo on my DIY handheld. Luckily, all the games I wanted to play again are running very well. Resident Evil 1, 2 and 3 on the PlayStation 1, Resident Evil Code Veronica and Dino Crisis on the Dreamcast, and Resident Evil 0, 1 and 4 on the GameCube. Now I just need a little extra free time to actually play the games. Act 5. Battery Life 
Making this video took a lot of time because I kept forgetting that I was making a video while recording the gameplay footage and I had a blast playing some of my favorite old games, but while doing so I had the feeling that the battery was draining very quickly. So when I did the battery life test, I thought that this timer that only goes up to 99 minutes would be more than sufficient, but to my surprise after 99 minutes the thing was still running. I had to restart the timer and after another 30 minutes the battery was finally empty. In total the battery life was over 2 hours, which is not bad at all in my opinion. This can of course vary depending on the used emulator, power settings and game. Act 6. The Oddities This is a DIY project, so of course it has a few oddities that wouldn't make it into a retail product. One problem is that the device cannot be charged while the controllers are connected, as they cover the charging port. A workaround for this is to use the Surface Go in the portrait mode. This looks cool, but it makes the picture quite small. Another special feature is that three USB-C cables are necessary to charge the Joy-Cons and the Surface at the same time. I should also mention that it's possible to set the display brightness in the system settings, but unfortunately it's not possible to change the display brightness while a game is running. With some tinkering this function could be assigned to a button combination on the controller, but so far it hasn't bothered me enough to make it worth the effort. The end. Now that we have reached the end of the video, I would like to know what do you think of my DIY handheld. Would you like to build something similar, or would you rather just go out and buy a real emulation handheld? Let me know in the comments below, and as always, thanks for watching. Leave a like if you liked the video and consider subscribing. See you in the next one.